Hello everyone, welcome to the session of regression analysis. In the previous session, we have discussed multiple linear regression. But in multiple linear regression, when you have many independent variables to regress the dependent variable, sometimes we observe some independent variables are interrelated. That means they are correlated. So, in case in any multiple regression, if some independent variables or explanatory variables are correlated to each other, then the multicollinearity comes in regression. Today, in this session, we will discuss the, the concept of multicollinearity and how it can be handled. So, let us see now, as I mentioned in multiple regression, if some variables like you know, you can think about example of say your age and say your experience will define your performance say, but at the same time if you include say you know your height or say you know your uh, say academic cool level academic activities etcetera. So, sometimes what happens some variables become irrelevant or not explaining the dependent variable and then that variable we directly remove. But sometimes some variables are relevant, but they are linearly dependent. So, in that case which variable to remove and how to handle that multicollinearity that we need to study. And when you have a multicollinearity it is very difficult you know to estimate the regression coefficients or the parameters and also the standard error may be very high and also it is very difficult to fit the final regression because you cannot conclude that the regression that you have fit that is the best regression or best causal relationship between the independent variables and dependent variables because there might be some interdependency among the independent variable. This multicollinearity create many issues of regression analysis while fitting a uh, causal relationship between independent variables and dependent variables. But in order to handle that, first you need to understand the level of multicollinearity, right. For example, suppose if you have a variable say you know say y and then say x1, x2. Suppose this data sets you have and x1, x2 are suppose linearly dependent to each other. You found high correlation coefficient between x1 and x2. In that case there is a multicollinearity. In order to measure that level of multicollinearity, there is a formula called variance inflation factor. How much variation is there between these two variables that you can calculate through VIF. This VIF is nothing but 1 by 1 minus R square. So, R square is the you know coefficient of determination which is nothing but for the particular variable. Suppose if you find the correlation between x1 and x2, you will find R square say R1 square upon x2. Similarly, if you have many many independent variables, you can find the correlation or say corresponding R square, the square of it by taking the other independent variable put together and how much these variables are being dependent with other or co correlated with other that you can define through individual R square of independent variables only. So, that independent variables if you calculate, if you consider and if you find corresponding R square and this using this formula you will be able to find the variance inflation factor. If the like I can give one example here suppose you are observing that the correlation between x1 and x2 are quite high say near to 90 percent and then both are independent variable and r square you found suppose say 90 percent. In that case your VIF variance inflation factor for that variables will be 1 minus 1 minus r square which will be nothing but suppose 1 we are calculating which will be 1 minus 1 by 1 minus 0 0.9 which would be almost 10 which is quite high. So, in that case there is a general protocol or general standard you know assumption that if the variance inflation factor of a variables see if couple of independent variables are correlated to each other you might consider them the correlation also and you can fit the regression and conclude the final regression analysis. But the level of correlation should be very low. Then only the little correlation or multicollinearity can be accepted. 
because sometimes variable are very important to consider and people might ask that what is the impact of that particular variable here. So why you have not included that variable? You can defend that you know there are interrelationship between the independent variables. So we have removed one of them. I'll discuss that you know the handling part of multicollinearity. But since independent variables has a merit in the regression process, so therefore if the variance inflation factor is less than five, like using this formula you can see if less than five, then you can say that no if there are less multicollinearity the interdependency among the independent variable. So, we can accept that error and we can or multicollinearity and we can proceed for the regression. If it is between 5 to 10, look at if there is no relation then r will be 0. So, variance inflation factor will be 1, right. So, there is a clear cut case that there is no interrelationship or no multicollinearity among the independent variable. But sometimes you will find a high r square. So, that means if r square value lies between you know closer to 0 your variance inflation factor will be good or low that means good. But if r square is closer to 1 you can see here if it is closer to 1 your variance inflation factor will increase. So, here you can see if the variance inflation factor is above then 10. So, it is a highly multicollinearity, but if it is in between 5 to 10 we call it as a moderately multicollinearity you should handle it. But if it is less than 5 on an it is a it is not a benchmark point, but to some extent people follow these rules. So, if it is less than 5, people say that it is okay carry forward the regression analysis. So, this is the general concept of variance inflation factor through which you will measure the level of multicollinearity, right. Suppose you have measured the level of multicollinearity, the next step is to assess it or handle it like deal the multicollinearity. There are you know as I mentioned it will have a big impact in your final decision making. The regression may not be acceptable if you have a high multicollinearity your inflation in, in terms of error calculations will be high, your correlation like coefficient of least square will be very absurd. So, you cannot accept it right, you cannot come up with any conclusion. So, you have to handle the or remove the multicollinearity. There are two popular process one is that you know either you remove the variable who are saying same thing. So, two variables are saying same thing and they are correlated to each other you delete one variable from your regression and rerun the regression. Otherwise, you can do the transformation. Sometimes, uh, suppose you take logarithm or some other functions like you know, Laplace transformation, etc. Sometimes the multicollinearity reduces. The best option is that remove the variable who are very close to each other and very strong correlated, but both are saying same thing or delete one. I will show you one example. Another option to handle the multicollinearity is that increase the sample size. Suppose you have a data set, say y say x1, x2, suppose suppose another variable you can take, you have the data sets and based on this say 20 sample data you are fitting the regression and you found there is a relationship between x2 and x3 multicollinearity. And either you can delete x3 say which says the point number 1 and now point number 2 says that you increase the sample size, you collect more sample. In that case you might see that the multicollinearity may go or may not remain there in your data sets. So, if you increase the sample size in that case also you can manage the multicollinearity or you can reduce the level of multicollinearity and the corresponding variance inflation factor. So, these are the two options, but in general what happens getting more sample may not be easy because company might have already provided or you already have a data sets and based on that you have to take a decision right. Increasing sample size is a good decision process or decision making process, but that is time consuming you have to collect the data etc. again. But based on the available data or historical data, if you take a decision and where you found that you know there is a strong multicollinearity, VIF value is very high, in that case the best option is that remove one variable. How to do that? Let us illustrate that part. Here I have taken one sample example, very basic example you will get the clear idea about the multicollinearity. Here you can see we have taken two independent variable and one dependent variable right and the data sets are there. We have fit the regression by Excel the way I have shown you in simple linear regression you know different measure of fitness of good and the R square calculation process standard error calculation process when you illustrated detail of that and the multiple regression process we have discussed how to handle all these things and how to get this summary sheet of your regression analysis and how to read the entire anaval table and the p value etc. Overall f value and the p value all these things we have discussed right. So, we are not going to repeat that just to illustrate the multicollinearity part let us see the table. 
So here we have two independent variable and dependent variable. We have fit the regression and we found the regression analysis. You might say that it's done, but here you can see the p values are none of them are significant. All of them are greater than 0 0.05, right? So this first indicates that the regression that you have put your r square might be high. Look at the r square, but the p value none of the p value are significant. So it signifies that it indicates that there are some issues. Now we will check the multicollinearity, we will calculate the various inflation factor. Before that we have tested the linear relationship, the correlation coefficient between the independent variable. So the two independent variable we have taken and we have found their correlation coefficient here you can see 90 percent minus 0.9. So there is a negatively correlation, it is negatively but it is a strongly correlated between the two independent variable almost 90 percent say. So therefore you can say that two independent variable of this particular problem are highly correlated. There is a multicollinearity, right? Because the correlation coefficient is quite high, it is minus 0.9. And if you calculate the variance inflation factor, we found it is 5.75, which is higher than 5. So it is a moderately multicollinearity exists over there. So we have to remove it, right? We cannot include both the independent variable in your regression analysis. We have fit the you know regression and we found their R square and the corresponding analysis and we found that the you know multicollinearity exists over there because VIF value is quite higher than that. You can do that 1 by 1 minus you know like 0 0.91091 091 square you can you know you can get to know or R square value you can put directly you will get to know the variance inflation factor value. Now we observe that there is a multicollinearity. How to remove it? What we have done? We have taken only x first with y and we predicted y through x. So we found the simple linear regression now and we have done the same thing for x2 also. Both regression we found and here we observe that look at one observation before I conclude this example you see here for x1 here you can see the coefficient value the beta value is positively correlated with y right it is positively explaining the y. But if you take the overall you know the regression which I have shown you in the previous slide overall regression here you can see here also look at the overall regression here you can see it is negatively explaining the y. So look at here minus 0.29 the coefficient part but here it is plus you can see plus 1.2 so it is completely absurd data you are getting the least square values you are getting the coefficients you are getting right. So you cannot conclude anything whether x1 is really explaining y or not when it comes to the joint venture of you know, joint regression of x1 and x2. So and also you can see here the p value of this regression while you are running the regression of y with x you can see the p value of the intercept part is quite high 0.71 but in x2 for the case of x2 here you can see the p value is significant in both cases. So therefore in this particular example either you can take x1 also and x2 also but the best recommendation is that since the p is quite significant for both the intercept and x2 for this particular variable of x2 we will conclude that include x2 in your final regression and exclude x1 from your regression analysis and the final recommendation is that consider y and x2 and predict the causal relationship between y and x2 done x1 we have removed. So this is what the multicollinearity and how you can handle the, the issues of multicollinearity right. Even we have tested the data the data that we have taken here you know with this data we have tested which one is making accurate forecast by putting new data into the you know x1 value and x2 value in this individual regression and we found that x2 is always better in terms of performance and the accuracy of prediction. So we conclude that x2 is better. Let us see one more example to get a better clarity about multicollinearity, practical example. Here you can see we have taken one example where the question is that the objective is that predict the person's height by means of their foot length. Like we all know right when you you know measure on person's height we all know that you know the foot length of the person's maybe left foot or say right foot that can give a tentative prediction about your height of one person's height. So here we have considered the height as the dependent variable and the independent variables are foot length, left foot length and right foot length and the data suppose we have the data right and we will fit the regression how the 
फुट लेंथ ऑफ लेफ्ट फुट लेंथ एंड राइट फुट लेंथ एक्सप्लेन द हाइट वी हैव डन द रिग्रेशन यूजिंग एक्सेल एंड वी फाउंड दिस रिलेशनशिप एज इट इज वी कैलकुलेटेड द फाइनल रिग्रेशन लाइन हेयर राइट एंड वी फाउंड ओवरऑल आर स्क्वायर इज क्वाइट गुड एंड लुक एट द पी वैल्यू ऑफ दिस डेटा सेट लुक एट बोथ पी फॉर एक लेफ्ट टू लेफ्ट फुट एंड राइट फुट आर हाई नॉट इवन यू नो पी शुड बी लेस देन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव राइट पॉइंट जीरो फाइव हेयर ओवरऑल पी इज ओवरऑल सिग्निफिकेंट ओवरऑल एनोवा पी इज क्वाइट गुड आफ्टर एफ टेस्ट बट वेन यू कम टू द इंडिविजुअल लेवल बिकॉज ऑफ ओवरऑल रिग्रेशन आर सेंग गुड एंड आर स्क्वायर इज हाई यू के नॉट कंक्लूड दैट द रिग्रेशन इज फाइन एंड लेटेस्ट कैरी फॉर ऑल द फोरकास्ट बट वेन यू कम टू द इंडिविजुअल पी वैल्यू थ्रू टी टेस्ट यू फाइंड दैट नन ऑफ द यू नो द प्रेटर वेरियबल एक्सप्लेनरी वेरियबल्स आर सिग्निफिकेंट ऑल ऑफ देम आर क्वाइट हायर दैन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सो यू के नॉट conclude this regression as the final regression so you have to check whether there is a multicollinearity or not right here we found a strong correlation between left foot data and the right foot data look at here correlation coefficient we have calculated and we found a strong correlation 99% correlation among the data between left foot and right foot between the left foot and right foot so we found a strong correlation between these two data sets so what we have to do now we have to find the vif variance inflation factor between an x1 x2 so we have Done the regression among x1, like x1, x2, or say left foot and right foot, or say we have calculated the correlation coefficient, and we found. Look at the data we have plotted here, and we found variance inflation factor is about 143, because of 0.99 here VIF is coming out to be 143, which is quite higher than 10. So we cannot include these two variables together, left foot and right foot, in measuring your height, right? So we will not consider two independent variable regression analysis here. We have to exclude one of them. First, we have taken the left foot, and we have predicted the height, left foot and the height, and we found. Look at here, both p value for both of them, specifically for the left foot, it's quite significant, and overall intercept also significant. R square is also high. You can fit the regression line, as as good as strong prediction. Single left foot is sufficient to make the prediction. Let's see what happens with the right side foot. and we, when you consider the right hand foot we found the r square is also very strong p value is also significant therefore this regression is also good so now the question is that which foot to consider left foot or right foot in final recommendation in the previous example example 1 we have considered only one like x2 as the final decision right final independent variable to include or to consider in your final regression And x1 we have deleted. We found the reason for that because p value are not significant. But here for both the independent variable, the p is significant. So we want to consider here the strategy is that consider either of them. Both are okay. Either you can consider left foot to measure your height in the regression process, or you can consider based on these data sets, you can right side foot also. So here you can see both are okay. You can consider either or. Both the independent variable are explaining effectively to the dependent variable, say height. and in this case the solution is that consider either of them so depending on the situation case you have to handle the multicollinearity so what is the conclusion of multicollinearity in multiple regression if there is a relationship strong relationship or multicollinearity between the independent variables first of all you cannot include them you have to remove them right but the which one to remove you calculate the variance inflation factor and the individual level of regression analysis and see which one through p value or overall test analysis significant test you check which one is measuring or explaining the dependent variable better with strong like you know summary data of regression coefficients and say you know error standard error r square and the p value based on that you make the recommendation which variable to include which variable to exclude and in case if you want to add more data sample data probably you without excluding the variables you can manage the multicollinearity also so these are the couple of way to manage the multicollinearity in multiple regression but make sure that you cannot ignore the multicollinearity if it is exist among the independent variable you have to handle it effectively so i believe it is clear to you all the basic understanding of multicollinearity and how to handle it in practical cases